Hello viewers, understanding RAID as a beginner requires not only dozens of hours of your time, but also a lot of nerves. After all, everyone wants a legendary character, right? This video is especially for you, because you want to get into the game and understand it faster than other beginners. I have gathered all my experience in the game, not only leveling tips, but also useful tricks that will help you save time. Today, I will guide you through the game, showing you all the mechanics and features you need to know. Let's dive in! But what to start with? I will show you the main trick, which is a starter set that every player can get. I'm talking about five cool champions on a new account. Plus, you can get the bonus on both PC and smartphone. Now I will show you more details. In the description at the link, you are guaranteed to get an exclusive bonus, two epic champions, Terrell and Aina, and an excellent set of resources for leveling up. Also, enter this promo code in the game menu on Android and PC or through a separate link for iOS devices. Free Frog. It gives the champion to Raggy the Frog, and some leveling resources. Next, enter the game for another 14 consecutive days and claim an awesome legendary character within the first seven days. And after another seven days, claim Jizzo. This is our offer to you, my viewers, a set of champions that is simply essential for everyone. Now, very briefly, my top eight tips for beginners who want to enjoy the game and play without mistakes. Of course, it is impossible, but I will try to help. One, save resources. Two, do not open shards right away you already have a bunch of cool champions. 3. Finish the campaign with a maximum of 3 stars. 4. Learn not to play in auto mode. The AI will attack everything in sight. 5. Join a clan and invite a friend to play. This will keep you interested in the game longer. 6. Take your first steps in the game only through the trials and mission tabs. Your progress will be much more visible there. This is additional training for beginners. 7. Do not rush to increase your account level. It only unlocks new features and solves almost nothing. 8. Log into the game consistently every day to claim an epic every 30 days. There are 9 of them in total. But wait, stop, it's too early to close the video because next I'm going to tell you about the mechanics of the game in detail and clearly for you, the viewer, because the game is much deeper than you think. It's not just a grind, Raid is a way of life. So you have completed the introductory mission and are presented with several champions to choose from. Which hero should I choose to start with? We have a total of four champions to choose from. Gaelic, Elaine, Kale, or Aethel. Kale deals the most damage to bosses. Gaelic is the campaign and arena champion. Aethel is good for most game modes. Elaine has high damage and is ideal for bosses in PvE. Once you have chosen a champion, level them up and equip them with a set of artifacts. There are several starting champion videos on our channel that you can watch. Next, you will need to create a group of champions that you will use to complete most of the activities. You will need a minimum of 4 champions and a maximum of 6. There should be a champion healer in the party, a champion who protects allies. We also need a hero to do debuffs, stun, sleep. Of course, we need heroes to deal damage. The focus of the game is on champions. There are already over 700 champions in the game, and the list is growing every month. They all have unique appearances, sets of abilities, and some are dedicated to favorite heroes from movies or collaborations. The most common are various epics and legendaries. Well, right from the start, you will have a formed starting group with which you can go through the first activities and even the arena. And how do you get your first legendary in Raid? You can get it from shards. During the X2 period, there is an increased chance to get legendary from sacred shards. The second way is to wait for collaborations, when developers introduce a legendary champion into the game for seven days of login. The principle is the same as for starting champions. A novice will receive their first sacred shard after about two weeks of active play. You will need to level up, complete quests, and develop your account. How do you farm champions? There is no such thing as farming. The only things that can be farmed are blue summoning shards for rare champions from the campaign. Now, in most cases, all of that is used to feed other champions. It is impossible to farm void or sacred shards. They are not easily earned, and they are just impossible to farm. You can get them through tournaments, through events, through quest progression. Which champions will be useful at the start? Here is a selection of champions that you can easily get for free in the game. Tarel, an excellent debuffer champion. His essence is debuffing defense, offense, and stunning. And the coolest part? is that he comes as a free gift to our viewers. Coldheart poisons enemies, reduces their accuracy, and debuffs healing block. The best rare champion in PvE can be obtained from shards, Apothecary. The best support champion for healing allies. If you equip and level him, he will heal a lot of health. Useful in the arena and against bosses in dungeons, obtained from shards. Diabolist, a champion whose speed buff can be obtained in the campaign, causes sleep on enemies with normal attacks and the champions that the beginner receives are perfect for their roles. 
Aina. In addition to dealing high damage, she also debuffs enemies. Taragi is a high damage support. He attacks enemies and gives them attack, provocation, and poison debuffs. Now available, this legendary character excels at PvE activities and is a must-have for everyone. Jizo plays the role of both tank and damage dealer thanks to a set of abilities that strengthen his defense and counterattack. If you manage to collect all of the above champions at the beginning, you can combine them into several ready-made champion builds for each mode and never miss a beat. Epics and legendaries are earned later in the game. Champions are awesome. Sometimes I get stuck just looking at their skins, but I will show you the whole process of how to level up. Level up either in combat, in the tavern with beer cans, or in the training camp. Once you reach the level cap, depending on how many stars you have, you will need to level up with chickens. This will increase your level by another 10. Rank up chickens can be earned in tournaments, events, and sometimes as promo codes. The more active you are in the game, the more chances you have to get this resource. Books can also be used to upgrade skills, increasing a champion's damage and effectiveness. You can obtain books by completing quests, missions, and tournaments. You can also use multiple identical champions. Duplicate champions also give skill points, which skill is improved as random. Improving a champion's skills is not always useful. There are some champions for which it is better not to waste books. Another important aspect is evolution, which involves filling stars with potions. What does that give you? An increase in the number of traits and an improvement in one of the skills, depending on the champion. The most common way to level up is to use food. The idea is to level up completely unnecessary common, uncommon, and rare champions, and then use them to level up your useful, rare, epic, and legendary champions. Level up food is a great substitute for beer cans, and high star food can be used instead of chickens. And you will be guided on this point during training. This is worth remembering. In the game, you will often use the tactic of leveling up your champions with food. How to understand that a champion is not needed and not effective? Open user ratings and see if there are absolutely no ratings above 4.5. Then it is feed. It's that simple. New way to level up a champion by giving them blessings. Blessings can only be placed when the champion is resurrected with souls. Souls can be obtained from the Altar of Souls. There are different types of boxes here, and by opening the soul stones, you can randomly obtain a soul for the champion you need. You will then awaken one of your heroes and choose a blessing based on the rarity of the champion. The more powerful the soul, the more powerful the bonus. You can increase your level by doing the right things. The first is a premium account, a status that allows you to earn more experience for completing battles. All experience increases, including champion experience and account experience. You can get premium for free by entering promo codes and completing small tasks that give you premium for 24 hours or more. The second most important moment in the game Raid Shadow Legends is the equipment of champions. I will try to cover this topic completely. A lot depends on the equipment. If you equip a champion incorrectly, you will have to remove the items and pay a certain amount of silver. Equipment determines how a champion will behave in battle, how long he will survive, and how much damage he will deal. Heroes are divided into several classes and traits, and depending on that, you need to equip them properly. For offensive champions, you improve the parameter that affects damage. For support champions, speed, tanks, need defense, and health. But these are just the basics. It still depends on the champion itself and how you want to use it. There is one tactic for beginners that I recommend. Boots with a primary parameter of speed, gloves for critical chance, and armor for defense or health. This allows beginners to not worry about selection, and champions in the group will be able to show off their skills. Improving artifacts is a must. Equipping the champion correctly is half the battle. You need to sharpen the equipment. You need silver to sharpen an item. Sharpening can be done safely up to level 4. After the 4th level, the success rate decreases, and so on up to plus 16. The higher the level, the more parameter traits you will receive. And as a late game way to improve equipment, it's runes and evolution. Runes can improve additional parameters of items, and development adds another main parameter or gives a bonus to the main parameter if the random worked out well. The forge allows you to create new artifacts that cannot be obtained from the campaign or dungeons. Artifacts are created using resources obtained in faction wars. Boosters can also specify the desired parameters for the item or increase the quality of the item created. The better the artifact you want to create, the rarer the resources you will need. What is the best way to farm equipment? To farm items, you need to go to a dungeon. Choose a mode that drops the required set of artifacts. Go to the most difficult boss you can defeat at that stage, and start the automatic battle with the Super Raid function. This way you will get twice as many rewards, but also spend twice as much energy. 
Sometimes in the game there are X2 and X3 set drop events in certain dungeons, so keep an eye on the game and farm the right equipment. And if you like our beginner's guide to Raid Shadow Legends, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Your few clicks will help my channel become more popular. If you're a beginner and just starting out, remember the most important advice. Resources in the game. Strictly save. Until you complete all the stages of the quests, any spending of resources will be in vain. Tasks from the Trials and Missions tab will drain your account to the maximum. What is the best way to spend rubies? There is a mine where you can invest your first 1,000 rubies. The mine produces rubies. Every 24 hours, come and collect them. This is a profitable investment that everyone should invest in. And the rubies already mined can be invested in upgrading the talents of one of the champions or buy a mine, upgrade it to level 3 to get more rubies even without playing a raid. Shards can be obtained from several sources. They drop randomly as loot in dungeons, can be earned by completing quests daily, and by participating in tournaments and events. Your activity determines the amount of shards you can collect. The main thing is to do it correctly and not to exhaust the resources of your account. These shards should only be used in X2 periods. They come in different types and for different shards. If you have X2 for ancient shards, a blue ray, then only open ancient shards. You will have an increased chance of obtaining rare champions of a particular class. Let's take a walk around the bastion and look at all the buildings and why they are needed. The portal is the center of the game. The champions you summon from there will be used in PvP and PvE. Not only can you summon champions from shards in the portal, but you can also merge champions to make them into something cooler. What about merging in raid? By participating in champion merges, you can earn particles, and if you collect 100 particles of a particular champion, you can create a legendary champion. All merges are more for high-level players who can afford to spend a lot of resources and energy that beginners cannot afford. Next is a mine, which is needed to mine rubies. The mine costs 500 rubies. At the market, you can buy all kinds of items and champions. Here, you can find items of varying quality, from the most common to the legendary. The rarer the item, the more silver it costs. Sometimes you can even find blue shards for 200,000 silver. In the forge, you can create items with different required parameters and rarity. Why craft items when you can just drop them? The forge is designed so that you can get items with the necessary stats. I have already talked about the forge. The Grand Hall is necessary to level up and improve the passive parameters of heroes of different elements. This is done with arena metals, which will be quite difficult to obtain. You can increase damage, health, accuracy, and other parameters for everyone at once. The Guardian Ring is mainly used to passively level up champions. Here, you can also disenchant legendary champions and buy new ones with special tokens. In general, this is its main function. There is also a Tavern. The Tavern is where all champions are leveled. Here you can level up, increase your rank, improve your skills, and develop your champions, and each type of leveling requires its own resources. In the 23rd year, a new structure, the Altar of Souls, and new functionality appeared. This allows you to awaken a champion with souls to use four categories of blessings. The stronger the soul, the stronger the effect that can be applied to the champion, and the more useful the champion will be in battle. And now it's time to talk about modes because it is necessary to understand what needs to be farmed in order to level up the heroes. The first and main mode is the story campaign. The campaign has several difficulty levels. It starts with the easiest difficulty. For completing each chapter, you will receive a set of perks for leveling up and progressing through missions. Different sets of artifacts are dropped at each location. The higher the difficulty, the cooler the artifacts you get for completing missions. But you won't get the best gear here. This mode is more about earning rewards in the lower progress bar. Each mission must be completed with three stars, which means you must complete it with two heroes and no deaths. At first, it will be difficult, especially if you play in auto mode instead of manually. So complete missions with two stars without any deaths. You have to complete seven such missions in each chapter. In the seventh chapter, there is a boss to defeat. There is a progress bar at the bottom of the playlist. The more stars you collect, the more rewards you will receive. Summoning shards, rubies, silver, and useful items. It is best to follow this tactic. Complete the campaign as best you can, but preferably with two stars. Then, once you finish one difficulty, you will have strong heroes with enough power to get three stars in most chapters. And if you have free energy, you can use it to complete the campaign with three stars. The next mode is Dungeons. I will divide it into two parts. The first is Citadels, with rank increase positions. And the second is Dungeons with Bosses, where you can farm items and get other perks. In the Citadels, you will encounter four different guard bosses with their own battle tactics. One is very defensive, the second heals with attacks, 
the third has high damage, and so on. The essence of these missions is to farm positions so that later you can evolve your hero by coloring stars to increase his passive stats. In dungeons, the combat mechanics are more complex. The bosses are actually whole trials with different mechanics. For example, Scavag. She constantly summons small spiders and can heal herself. The spiders are constantly using poisons, and you have to survive in this chaos. And you also have to choose heroes who can kill the little spiders and remove the poison debuffs. Such a boss requires the right approach in champions. I will show you the main tactic that is best to follow. Burning health works well on the boss, and the boss will always attack the weakest target in terms of element. This means that the boss's attacks are easy to manipulate. To do this, you need a tank with a weak element in the party. The tank should be equipped with lifesteal set and resilience to simply live longer. There should also be a support champion in the party to remove poison debuffs, provide regeneration, and provide a mass defense buff. Choose champions with the necessary skills. Even on the boss Scavag, champions that deal damage based on the boss's maximum health work well, the easiest of which are the Royal Guard and Coldheart. They are used by everyone from beginners to advanced players. The essence is maximum group survivability and 2-3 champions that deal damage based on the boss's health. The tactic is still effective and fun, but requires a high level of power from the champions. The Lava Knight is even harder. He puts a block on himself and absorbs 5 attacks. Then he can put another block on himself. You need heroes that can hit a target multiple times, and you also need someone to remove debuffs. Dungeons drop very interesting rewards that are not available in the campaign. Artifacts of different rarity, decorations, shards, scrolls for talent upgrades, and resources. This is the mode that requires the most farming. To help you, there is a feature called multi-battle. You simply start 30 attempts and farm the mode you need to get new artifacts. Every day you get 30 attempts. Use them and the next day you can repeat. Faction Wars 3 Mode From time to time, various crypts will open that need to be closed. For example, if you enter the Banner Lords or Orc Crypt, you will need a group of characters from that faction to complete the mission. As you progress through the tasks, the enemies will become more difficult. These tasks are there to give you rubies for crafting items. I already talked about crafting. The next mode is Arena. Regular Arena is a 4v4 battle where victory goes to the more coordinated party that not only deals a lot of damage but also has high efficiency. Before the battle, you can see your opponent's nickname, what rewards you will receive, the composition of the enemy team, and their strength. Choose an opponent weaker than yourself to have a better chance of winning. In arena battles, it is highly recommended that you do not use automatic combat if the skill level is close to yours. In order to play without auto battle, you must know your team's abilities and when to use skills to quickly destroy the enemy team. Every victory increases your rating. The more you win, the higher league you enter. The group arena is more difficult. You will need four times as many heroes and an understanding of battle tactics to avoid problems in a prolonged battle. Auto battle is inappropriate. However, if you have a really good set of champions, auto battle may be appropriate. The online arena is available at level 50, but not everyone can play in it, as it is very demanding in terms of champion selection and game knowledge. Only the greatest minds will be able to play and win in it. The activity is extremely difficult, but the rewards will not be small, and in general, as in any online shooter, victory is achieved through skill. Clan wars are opened when you join a clan. There are two bosses, Hydra and Demon Lord. The main task is to defeat the boss with the whole clan. You cannot defeat the boss alone, you just have to inflict as much damage as possible to get some boxes of rewards later. Both the Hydra and the Demon Lord have multiple difficulties. The more difficult the boss is, the more damage it deals, and the more abilities it uses. The Demon Lord is one of the fattest bosses in terms of health, and he needs debuffs to deal with his strong attacks that will quickly shut down your champions. The most important thing is to keep the debuffs on both attack and defense. Choose champions whose A1 has a 50% chance to apply this penalty. The easiest example is Coffin Smasher. Also, for damage, we definitely need a poison debuff. There are two types of this debuff, 5% poison and 2.5% of total health. But, since you can only apply up to 10 debuffs on the boss, we need champions that specifically apply 5% poison. Starting with Kale or Coldheart will work for the initial period. In addition to poison, the HP burn debuff also works well, causing similar periodic damage, and there are many champions with this debuff. The easiest ones are Bulwark and Jotun. If you have stronger health burners, that's great. It is desirable to have ally shield buffs, mass defense buffs, speed, those are the basics. It is also desirable to have a speed aura to move more often. Players usually play either for speed, which is extremely important to have the right gear, or for unkill packs. 
which give you a damage blocking buff and a team shield. A little pause on how to collect a pack of champions on Hydra. In general, my recommendations will be based on winning strategy, not specific heroes. You have your champions, I have mine. Let's not focus on the names of the champions, but what buffs and debuffs they should have to defeat this boss. What debuffs are essential on Hydra? Buff Block, HP Burn, Mass Attack Debuff, Mass Defense Debuff, Speed Debuff, and Leech. With this set of debuffs, you will weaken the Hydra's heads to the maximum and heal from attacks on any of its heads. And what buffs are needed? They are crucial to victory. So, buffs for defense and attack, buff increase, veil and shield, acceleration, regeneration, counterattack, resurrection, and debuff block are also useful. About champions. What specific characteristics do we need in a champion? We need a champion with mass resurrection, a champion that accelerates allies, and champions with a number of buffs and debuffs that I mentioned above. And don't forget to start with what you have on your account. Now that we know the basics of victory, let me gather a group of champions to defeat the Hydra. We need an Arbiter to resurrect allies, a Stag Knight to provide attack, defense, speed debuffs. Let's also take a Royal Guard. He has a defense debuff and a speed penalty. A Geomancer will also be useful. He gives weakness, health burn, and accuracy penalties. We also need a champion to heal. Rector Drath will be perfect, as she also gives an attack penalty and the Veil buff. And we also need a champion like Underpriest Brogni. He gives bonuses to attack defense block, imposes HP burn on the enemy. The late game mode Cursed City currently consists of dozens of different missions, each with its own conditions for victory. A specific set of factions, two bosses in one battle, and various difficulties to make your life in this city as difficult as possible. And in the end you will face a boss, the final boss, which will test your nerves and make you feel pain in your ass. But the reward? The legendary mythical champion, or just OP. Fortunately, this mode unlocks at level 52, which is considered mid-game. By then, you will have plenty of champions to use in this mode. There is also a chat in the game. You are not playing with bots, but with real players. In the chat, you can ask for advice from more experienced players and just chat. The chat also acts as a timeline. It shows what champions other players are getting from shards, what artifacts they are upgrading, and so on. So how do you go from noob to pro? With all the information you have seen in this guide, you will be able to master the basics of the mechanics and understand how you want to develop in the game. In addition, the starter set of four epics we offer will make it easier for you to become a pro by saving you shards and giving you a good boost for many early activities. Boss tactics all work. The main thing you need to do is equip your champions with the right gear and upgrade your equipment so that the modes that seemed difficult yesterday become easy for you. If anything is unclear, write comments. I will try to answer you with a text response, or if there are many requests, I will make a video. Based on this guide, I leveled up my second main account, and the results surprised me. I just enjoyed the game and didn't play non-stop, just a few times a day. The account had a lot of resources and several useful champions, not only from the starting set, but also as a result. And I remind you that the link with bonuses will be in the description. Click it to get the best set of champions to start. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, give it a like. I have selected some videos for you to watch. See you all 